Hi, my name is Tylena Goyo, and this is Indigenous Expressions. This is a panel discussion for Indigenous Peoples Day Philly 2020. Today, we have three incredible artists that are joining us for this conversation. Priscilla Bell, Herman Agoyo, and Yuri Ridgway. Priscilla Bell is a Taino artist. She was born in North Philadelphia and raised in Hunting Park section of the city. As a young child, she marveled at the colorful street art and graffiti that adorned the North Philly streets. Inspired by art, Priscilla began to take up drawing and started recording everything she saw in her neighborhood and those in her community. She also works as a freelance muralist with mural arts and is a teaching artist for the Jubilee School. Herman Agoyo II is originally from Oke Wingé, Cochiti, and Kiwa, which are three distinct indigenous nations surrounding Santa Fe, New Mexico. He works for a healthcare-focused architectural design and advisory firm designing projects all along the Eastern seaboard. Herman has grown up with traditional teachings, dances, and songs that have been a part of his communities for thousands of years. Though he is far from his homelands, Herman always carries his traditions with him. And Yuri Ridgway, as the owner of Red Blanket Entertainment, Yuri has recorded and produced several albums for Native American recording artists and drum groups, as well as compiling, restoring, and archiving historic recordings for preservation. Yuri wrote, produced, and choreographed the theatrical performance the Lenape, Then and Now, a play de depicting the Lenape tribal history through dance and song. Traveling across the US and into Canada, he has given native dance performances and lectures at schools, universities, performing arts centers, museums, and government agencies. Yuri is a citizen and elected councilman of the Nanakoke Lenai Lenape tribal nation located in Bridgeton, New Jersey. You are all so fabulous. Thank you so much for doing this panel with us. I'm really excited to have you here today. Um, before we begin, I had asked Herman if he would sing us an opening song, um, kind of to welcome us and our guests. And Herman, are you up for that now? Hey, uh, hey, oh, hey, oh. We all, hey, and hey, 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 oh. Ya e yo he yo, we ya he 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 yo. Ya e yo ah he yo, we ya ya ha ya 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 e e yo o o ah ah we ah ah yo ah we ah yo yo. Ya e yo he yo we ya he e e ne e e yo ya e yo he yo we ya he e e ne e e yo ya e yo he yo we ya he e e ne e e yo ya e yo a yo we e ya ha. Ya 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 e e yo o a a we a o ya a we a o ya o ya o. Thank you so much. Can you tell us a little bit about about that song? Um. So the song I sang was, we have these songs that um, we sing during very of uh, various dances. Um throughout the year in which it's kind of a procession to get out to the, to the main plaza. Um, and it's, it's to signify that, that we're, we're taking the dance out, that we're literally, literally walking and singing. And there's a whole chorus of, of um, singers and the, and the drummers and in front of us, are all the dancers, um, and 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 that type of song is used for, like I said, a variety of, of dances. It could be a buffalo dance, it could be an eagle dance, um, but we're as we're walking. That's the type of song that we would sing um, to let everybody know that this is what we're doing. We're taking the dance out um, as we walk out into the main, um, the center of of our village um, and that's so that's what we do to walk out and then when we bring them back in we'll sing the same song um, and that's that's the process for each each time that we 
we go out and it, it'll be a different song. So in, in, a, in a day, um, we will, depending on the exact time of year and the exact dance, we may be presenting a dance um, eight times or 10 times or 12 times, but each time we'll come out, lead, um, lead the dancers out, take them back in with, uh, with a different song um, like that. Thank you, Herman, for sharing that. Yuri, can you share a little bit about um, your songs and how you, you know, you're archiving music, but you're also creating your own music um, based on tradition and going forward and for your little ones. So how, how do you intertwine all of that? Well, starting with the powwow style music that we do, uh, singing with Red Blanket Singers, we use a lot of new contemporary, uh, incorporating our language into the songs. Uh, powwow is universal. It's everywhere we go at. It's that same, uh, that same heartbeat that we have, that same drum, those drum rhythms. And we use, we've taken the, old, the uh, older songs and just added our, our own influence to those. Uh, a lot of times we sing old songs, songs that have been passed down, uh, not necessarily through our community, but from other communities. That's where we started at. And since this time, we've learned, um, we were taught, I should say, and, and, we, and we learned how to bring that into, our, into today's world. Um, so we take songs and, and we add our language to it, the, the Lenape language, and we sing things in our language. It could be something as simple as, you know, um, uh, you know thank, you, uh, thank you for giving us friends. It could be something as simple as um, one of our more contemporary songs we have on our, our latest album. We actually say in our language, um, look out, warrior, the white man is here. You know, just th th those are the type of things that we, um, we still place into our, our, our songs. You know, or don't, don't be afraid, follow me. And that could be applied to anything. Uh, and that's what we do with our, with our powwows. Then we take looking at the historical songs that we still sing today. Uh, we were able to um, take those historical recordings, clean them up some, you know, get some rid of some of the static, some of the, uh, mm -hmm. and kind of highlight the voices with those. And then we've started to incorporate and, and apply today's, uh, so add new songs for today, I should say. Uh, create and compose new songs that we sing for ceremony. We sing in our in our in our piamokan, in our sweat lodges. We sing them into our our other ceremonies. So we've we've taken the old, applied it with the well, a new language, and kind of put today's feelings and emotions that we have today into our music. That's incredible. And that and and on that, Priscilla, you are a mural artist, a painter, and I, I have the same kind of question for you, how, although it's not about music, <laughs> but about your artwork. How do you incorporate your traditions and your stories and and your um, your community into your work and, and also focus on issues that are happening today with our people? Yes, um, thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, so, so it all started like, um, as you stated before, when I was young and uh, growing up in diaspora away from the islands, um, uh, it was beneficial for me to grow up in an area that had a lot of people that came from the islands and they incorporated a lot, a lot of the symbols everywhere, like throughout, like they would paint, they would uh, paint uh, some of the, um, let's say benches in a park or, or walls, you know, um, even with the beauty artists, they would put like Taino symbols everywhere. So I grew up actually seeing a lot of our symbols and, um, you know, listening to some of the stories. So, um, that was actually really beneficial for me. And I incorporated it into my art because a lot of my art has to do with uh, identity and my family and my surroundings. Um, it's pretty personal, but I don't mind sharing that, you know, those stories with folks um, that might not be familiar with. 
with them, especially if, you know, uh, being part of a marginalized community within a marginalized community. <laughs> it's, um, I always felt the need to kind of incorporate those symbols or those stories within my painting. Um, fairly recently, um, I wouldn't say recently, within the last uh, five years or so, um, a lot of the a lot of the goings ons like what's happening in Puerto Rico, for example, with the dumping of toxic ashes or spraying chemicals, or even with the um, hurricane and the earthquakes, uh, a lot of these um, a lot of these uh, issues have entered into my uh, work. Um, you know, whether it be through life painting, uh, I did one piece that. Uh, had to do with um, Standing Rock. Okay, so uh, my question. Go ahead. My question was, you you make so many things. You're you're an artist through and through. I mean, and so how do you? How is it a part of your everyday life? Your art making. My art making in my everyday life. Um, there's not a day that goes by we're not. In, in, in my household, either myself, um, my, my wife, um, even my, my relatives that are coming over and we're sharing songs, we're sharing ideas, concepts on how to, how to make clothing, how to make regalia, how, to, how, how we're making our drums, new ways to create our rattles or even old ways to create our rattles. We're always looking for, uh, uh, we're always looking for old ways first, I should say, and using those old ways and trying to uh, recreate them the best, the best that we can. And, and those, those songs that we, the songs that we sing and the songs that we come up with, they're constantly evolving. We, we share every day things that, uh, that come to our mind. We share every day uh, our, our ideas for, for ceremony, our ideas for, constructing our, 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 our next thing that we want to do, be it a, be it a, a play, be it uh, a, a dance style or coming up with new dances for our community. So we can say, Hey, is this something we can share with our young ones? Like, let's, let's try to, if we do this for them, maybe, maybe it'll bring some of our young ones back to our community. The ones that are, that are straying to other, other, uh, not, I don't want to say other cultures, but, uh, the social norm in, in today's society going mainstream and we're trying to bring them back to some of our teaching so they can, they can create their own art form for what they want to do. And so, yes, every day is, a, is something new for us. Uh, our ideas come from uh, uh, similar to what he, uh, uh, we were saying before, our ideas come from everything. Everything is around us. It could be, uh, it could be something that we see, I don't know, something happened that we think is kind of funny. Next thing you know, we're, we're, we're making it into a song and it's nothing that's going to get published or of that nature, but it makes us feel good inside. And that's, and that's what we do on a daily, on a daily basis. Yeah. It's just, it's fantastic. It's so beautiful. And Priscilla, thank you for coming back. <laughs> so the same question for you then <laughs> is, you know, you're, you are actually so, um, immersed in the Philly art community and you're making art all the time um, publicly, but how is it even privately, like how is it immersed into your daily life? Well, um, I second um, the sentiments that were expressed uh, just earlier um, with the other artists. Um, is it, well, with uh, my, my frame of work, uh, I work with the visual arts. So a lot of times, like even if I'm, um, working with uh, my kids at home and we're doing art together um, and we're painting or something like that, even doodling, um, a lot of it gets incorporated um, into uh, just like our daily activities. Uh, like uh, for example, I was invited to do a fundraiser and we were doing a live painting for the event. And of course, um, 
it, it was primarily, it was more for like, um, let's say, uh, it, for Puerto Rican culture in general as a whole. Um, but I did incorporate some of the symbols from the island and, and things because that's very much a part of um, our people and our community, um, whether it's on the island or in diaspora. So, uh, and then, you know, even when people see some of the symbols or they ask about the imagery, a lot of times it's, it's, it's a teaching moment. So I can share some, some information and some stories that way too. So every moment, um, whether it's, I'm wearing a t-shirt that I designed <laughs> that has a, a you know, a symbol or something. It's always a opportunity for offering a teaching moment for those uh, in within the community that might not know uh, what these symbols mean and, and where they come from. Carmen, I had a question for you because you are so far from home and what you've been living here for five years or so uh, here in Philadelphia. What has this adjustment been like for you? And in, in terms of creating your songs, you know, at home you were so, you had everything and your community and your people accessible and and you were inspired and exchanged. I mean, all of that was happening all the time and now it's not there. So how how do you handle that and how do you feel about it? So yeah, when we gather for our ceremonies, we, we, we create songs and the idea is with each new year, we, we bring new songs. It may be the same dance that we do at the same time of the year, um, but the idea is that we bring new songs. So when we come together, you know, we we come with with a song composed, um, and those who are who are very skilled will come with multiple songs, and together we come up with the the amount of songs that we need for for that ceremony. Um, and usually the guys are, you know, excited about, about the ceremony. So they'll, they'll come prepared. Um, and in most years we, we don't have any problem trying to come up with the, the, the number of songs for that ceremony. And, you know, that in itself is, is something that I miss, right? That gathering, spending that time with, with your, with your cousins, with your friends. Um, because what we do is, we gather from that point on, we gather every day um, and we, we sing those songs because it takes time to learn someone else's song, right? You, you're there, you sing your songs so that the others can learn it. Um, and then they, they sing theirs. And, and so it takes many hours, many days to, to learn people's songs. And it's, it's something that is part of the process, right? Spending that time together, um, and typically during that time, that creation of, of in, in learning those songs, it's you're there with just the men um, and the young young boys and even even children. Um, but that's that's part of the process to spend that time together. And of course, I miss that being able to those those few hours every day. Um, typically, because we respect the fact that people have jobs, we usually gather. Um, towards the evening, six o'clock or so, maybe even seven, depending on, uh, on, on the summer, we may push it because there's more daylight. Um, but we gather, we, we spend that time together and and being out here in Philadelphia, I, I miss that, I, I, I don't get the opportunity to spend all that time um, to, to hear and see um, people's creativity um, and just to, to see each other and to catch up, you know? Just, just to talk about work sometimes in between as we're waiting for everybody to gather. We, we have little conversations about, about work, about, about our kids, um, uh, you know, people um, just little, little things that they do throughout the day. You just kind of catch up. And, and obviously during this pandemic, that, that's not occurring back home. Um, and, and that's, some, I guess maybe for me being so far removed, it's hard for me, but I imagine it must be harder to be for people to be there, to be so close to each other, yet you can't gather, you can't come together to celebrate. Um, and you, 
you can't even um, during this time you also can't even gather to 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 grieve right I mean as people pass um, and that makes it difficult as well being for for people not to be able to gather it it makes you know we come together to celebrate but we also come together to grieve um, and and having that community your your family your friends your relatives there makes makes that process easier um not only to grieve but even to celebrate like that's that's what you that makes it special um and and right now it's it is difficult that people um can't do that right we're trying to respect social distancing and and, and limiting the the spread of COVID. so right who would have ever thought that our ceremonies would be affected um, and be put on pause for such a long duration. Um, right. right, but we have to keep our elders safe and our communities safe. Um, I know you have to take off, but I'd, I'd like to ask two quick questions before you go, if that's possible. Yes. And this is a shift. Um, it's a, you know, because of this, the quarantining and the separation online has kind of exploded and separate from ceremonies, there are a lot of people online doing kind of live videos and songs through social distance powwow. And um, I know there are a few people that you follow that are just, they're making songs and you find them fun and some are funny and some are poignant, yeah. but they've really um, given you something during this time. So that's that's one question. And then my follow-up would be, sometimes you're like, oh, he made a good song, right? Or someone said this, that I made a good song. And I, I'm just curious, like, what does that mean to you? So those are the two questions I'd love you to answer before you take off. Yeah. Um, it is amazing to that we can still be connected despite the pandemic and the lockdown, and the quarantines, right? Social distance powwow has been amazing. Uh, I, I, I love um, going through my Facebook feed and finding new posts, right? And, and typically there's different themes. Um, sometimes they're honoring somebody or um, a community or a style or, and, and it's, it's, it's awesome. I, I love it to see. And I think it's given us a chance to a glimpse into other tribal communities to see what they do. Cause otherwise I wouldn't have access to that. Right? I wouldn't be able to visit a community um, up in Canada or in Oklahoma or in New Mexico all at the same time, right? People are participating and bringing um, their songs and some of them are also bringing dances and it's, it's, I, I, I love it. It, it, it feeds me. I, um, I, I really, really enjoy that and um i i just found find that so valuable and of course you know through facebook through youtube um it i i, I seek those out right I, I'll, I'll look for 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 songs and for dances um uh, and and it, and it's fun um and of course it, it is in some regard where i where i come from our communities, we, we actually don't allow um, recording. Um, and so it is it is a little difficult for people who are on, for, from my community to participate in those kinds of events because you worry about, you, you may get a little uh, negative feedback from, from people saying, well, it's the, the intent is not to put that out there to record that. Um, because that belongs to us. Once you put it out there on that sort of a, uh, pub, such a public medium, then it's it it's taken away from us. It's no longer ours. And so there is there are debates over that. Um, you know, I've seen people share things and leave it up for a few hours and then take it down because they they feel they feel that pressure, right? It, it's and it, and it's going to vary from every community. Some communities are more um, open to to that, to sharing and publishing um, their songs, but um, you know where I come from, that's that's not that's not allowed. Um, but it's it is amazing to see some some neighboring um, villages, some some groups come together, and they are able to share because they they change right. They they're able to adapt 
take from what they know and use things like like round dance and 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 the different intertribal songs from Powell's and make it their own and they have their own um, style which isn't you know someone who 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 lives their life on the powwow circuit will say wow that's not really a powwow song or, or a true round dance but they're trying to fit in and be able to to change what and and just share and and to see that created creativity is um to me is 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 exciting i, I love to see when there are different um groups different guys who will participate in social distance power from from back home and to see them see that creativity that adaption of what of of what they know and 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 present it in a way that it's not going to be um controversial right no one's going to say oh you shouldn't be doing that because they're saying wow this I've, I've changed it it's it's completely different it's not the same um and therefore it's safe and 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 it, and it is acceptable i think people are 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 recognizing that um, and I'm glad they're doing it because it still allows me to, to, to have a, it, you know, even though it's online, it's still a connection. Yeah. Um, and I, and think, I, I love that. I think we're all just trying to figure it all out, you know, and, and this is such a new time. So quickly, last question is what is, when you say that was a good song <laughs> or he made a good song, what does that mean um, to you? To me, I think it's the integration of, uh, while using the language is, is I think, uh, part of that, um, and, and 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 I like when when people are able to integrate the language into their song in a new way. Um, I think that's that's pretty special, um, and I and it's inspiring, um, and 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 I think uh, yeah. When I, to me, when I say I hear a good song, like it's. Um, it's just one of those. It's just uh, it's it's a skill, obviously, that that gets refined and honed over after, year after year, right? Um, and it's just something that is, it's just uplifting. Um, even even a, a style of song that is, isn't maybe traditionally from where I come from, but once you hear it, the melody, the chorus, and the words. Uh, it will, it just resonates, um, regardless of what community, what tribe they come from. It, it you can connect to it, and it's a, uh, it's a little, you know, intangible, um, but it's, it's, it's special. And I'm grateful for that. People are, 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 are willing to share, are confident, you know, because it, it, it's a little scary, right, to put things out there. Uh, it, it, you got to be brave. Right, because you're you you're you're being a you're sharing yourself, you're being a little vulnerable. Um and I and I appreciate that that people are uh have the courage to do so. Um myself, I haven't really I haven't participated in, in any of these like social distance or publishing things on YouTube or anything like that. Um and I and I think uh like I said, I, there where I come from the 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 so the norms there, right? We don't, we don't allow recording. It's, it's, uh, I think that's, that weighs on me, right. For kind of, um, I think about that and, and I guess that's, that's the, uh, that's how one thing to figure out is how can you participate and in a, in a safe way. Um, uh, that's, that's something that I haven't yet figured out, mm -hmm. but hope to, uh, in the future. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today and have a great meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Later, everybody. So, Yuri, on, you know, Herman was talking about songs, changing songs, songs evolving. And I want to ask you about that because you had you had touched upon this before how you'll see something or something will happen in the world and you'll make a song about it. It may not be something that that the the group sings at a powwow or in a public event or at a ceremony, but it's something that's created for you and and your close your family or your community. Um,
Can you expand mm -hmm. more about that, about how things are evolving and changing and we, we adopt things from other cultures and you know, how, how does all of that work in your mind? Um, <laughs> one of the first things come to mind is um, how I how I proposed to my wife. Uh, I I wrote her I wrote her a song, and I sang her I sang her a song, and it was it was kind of a uh, of a like a hand drum song, whatever the hand drums, and, and I sang the song, and and um, and in the song, you know, I asked her I asked her to marry me. I asked her both in in the, our our language and then I came back and said it in English in case she didn't understand it in the language so uh, that's that's just one way of we're showing how we how we um, uh, incorporating today's stuff like I said uh, in the song I'm talking about how I got down and uh, here I am on one knee asking you to marry me and um, so incorporating today's modern you know getting on a knee to propose and putting it into a, a hand drum song to do that so that's that's one way uh, you take some of the older songs some i can't say older songs other powwow songs things that are out there um, they incorporate uh our the songs for a uh, the wars you know to talk about this how how uh saddam hussein you know and how how people like him or dictators like him will not be tolerated and so you'll hear you'll hear saddam hussein's name in our songs in, in that song and it's just and it becomes one of our veteran songs it's a song that's sung at, at powwow so world events were incorporated in to the music like that thank you yeah. priscilla you you did cut out a bit before when you were talking about um how you incorporate symbols um you know symbols that are meaningful to you and and then I'd, I'd like you to just explore that a little bit more, but also talk about how current day issues that affect your community are something that you look toward when you create your murals and your, your personal art. Um, thank you, yes, um, definitely. Uh, well, I think that um, the fact that I work with these Western materials um, in a, like in a westernized style, which is like representational art. Um, I try to incorporate the symbols of my ancestors, of our people, and, and in our work, in my work. Um, however, it's like, it's not done traditionally. So like, we do have people that are working traditionally, like in pottery and in stone and things of that nature. But I'm using these like modern materials. I'm using spray paint, I'm using marker, I'm using, you know, uh, acrylic paint. <laughs> so these these modern inventions, you know, and, and incorporating some of our ancient symbols in a Western style, you know, um, that's kind of like um, bringing it into, I guess, the 21st century and continuing and how can this evolve, right? So, um, and just keep on using new materials, um, you know, uh, bringing it bringing our our stories and our symbols to like a wider audience and 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 share in this way and now with um covid of course now with uh having to do things online you know that even creates another layer to it as as the artists were discussing before you know the social distance powwow and and putting um some of these events or live events online um now in in my work, uh, because I, I mentioned earlier that I like to work with um, issues that uh, that are that are prevalent in in my island and the Caribbean um, with our people, um, being it's going to be uh, 528 years um, this month um, that uh, Columbus got lost. <laughs> over and it was um, my ancestors who were the first to um, have encountered these folks. And so um, dealing with that and, and their um, kind of honoring their resilience and honoring, you know, their strength and um, prevailing and having a lot of, um, a lot of uh, stories 
even so long ago um, trickle down into um, and, and survive, you know, all these years to now. Um, it's pretty, I think it's pretty profound. It's pretty amazing. And that not just Puerto Rico, but we're talking about like the entirety of, of the greater Antilles. So, um, you know, the, you know, we call ourselves Taino, but um, that's not really what we called ourselves. Um, so, uh, but for lack of a better word, academics labeled us as Taino, which is, um, which is another thing. And in speaking of that, in speaking about academics and speaking about what's really, really great, what's happening now is that we have our own academics, you know, indigenous um, Caribbean folks who are kind of uh, reclaiming a lot of, um, a lot of the work and uh, with the language revitalization, with anthropology and uh, piecing stories, piecing all of these stories together because, um, you know, Cuba might have a little bit, Puerto Rico might have a little bit, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica. So um, a lot of this revitalization is happening all over and it does influence my work because I do get to use these 21st century means to speak to somebody who's Yame, you know, from Jamaica, <laughs> you know, and they might share something with me or share a story with me and vice versa. And it's like, wow, this is like really profound. It's really, really cool. So um, yeah, this is, it's, it's great to, to be here and represent. <laughs> yes, I, I think that what you're doing is so impactful, especially in a place like Philadelphia where, um, you know, a lot of tourists come here and you know they have this this idea and the way the city is marketed is like it's the founding place of america or you know however they market it but it's um and the indi our indigenous story is not told here right it's it's kind of really kept under wraps and you can walk around old town and there you will see no representation at all and there's people there are people like you and other artists who are making changes and and you know basically screaming like we are here and this is what we're doing. And this is the right, this is the accurate story. This is what really happened. And so when I look at your work, it's so, it, it because it's so prevalent around the city, you know, and you're telling stories and you have this voice and it's, your work is very powerful um, to know that it's affecting, like you're saying your own community, but then the people who maybe have not been educated and don't really understand, and it makes them go, huh. And it just makes them think because your work is so layered and it doesn't tell them, maybe they don't understand the direct story, but it makes them, it, they have to be forced to think about it, even if for a split second, that that what they've been fed all their lives isn't isn't the truth. There's another story behind that that they don't know. And if it propels someone to explore that, then that's really amazing. So my question for you is when you're creating, are you creating with your community in mind? Are you creating just something that you just want to do? Are you, or are you saying like, or does it depend on the platform? Or are you saying like, this is something that people need to know? Because I know you did a recently did tell me about the mural you did at Rally. You had told me, you said, this is something people need to know. So I want to know at what point do you like switch how you're going, how do you decide what you're going to paint? Yeah, it, it, it does depend on platform. Um, a lot of times with uh, uh, these live painting events, um, you know, you have to keep your audience in mind. You also have to keep in mind um, those who are commissioning you or who are hosting, you know, so um, definitely with uh, the Crystal Bird Fawcett uh, mural that's at, uh, that was an outside of Raleigh uh, coffee shop down South Street. Um, that piece had, was a direct reaction to what was happening at the time with Black Lives Matter and you know the injustices that are happening uh, to Black folks um, you know, to this very day. So, you know, featuring an African-American woman who was one of the first state legislator people, uh, folks to hold office in the United States back in 1938. I mean, that's pretty profound. And 
she was elected here in Philadelphia. And a lot of people don't know that, you know, that history. And I, I guess it has a lot to do with the fact that I love, uh, I love history and I love teaching. So I've been teaching for a long time. And being the teacher in me always wants to, you know, share, share some information, you know, that people might not know. So, and, and, and let's say, for example, um, uh, if I'm going to do a mural uh, that has to do with uh, just my people, uh, my folks. So what I'll do is um, um, I'll meditate on it. I'll sit on it for a little bit, you know. So um, I, I, I do, I have like a little thing that I do to set myself up, you know. I fast for a day. <laughs> um, and just uh, a lot of the stories, a lot of the images come to me. You know, um, when I do that, and, and it's like I get myself in a prayerful um, state, uh, especially when it's something that has to do um, with my ancestors. So, uh, and that's where uh, pieces like the the red piece, that the Standing Rock to Borigen piece that I did uh, for Tiny Room for Elephants, for example, that piece was every time I I put paint on on the wood panel, you know, um, it was just very mindful, you know, um, of what I was doing. And, you know, I just listened to, I just listened to what I was being told to put, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But um, that's something that, uh, that's how I approach a lot of these pieces. Uh, most recently at uh, Sunflower Philly, um, I did, of course, the fundraiser to Puerto Rico, and it was pretty much the same, same deal, same thing. So that's incredible, and and it's almost as if a lot of artists talk about their work as a sort of prayer, right? And so you're not, you're just the the what do you call it, like the medium that that it, it it's not it's not you, it's not intellectually you. You're just creating, you're doing, like you said, you're doing what's being told to you. So Yuri, on the same note, you know, it's, there's several things that you do, like you're creating um, for you and your family and community, but then you're also going out into the world and you're performing in front of very large audiences and, and traveling to different parts of the, the country. And so I imagine the reception that you get in different places is vastly different depending on where you are. How do you negotiate, um, like, you know, you know what you do and, and kind of what Herman was talking about, you know what you do, you know what songs you have, there's certain things that you, you wouldn't share publicly. How do you negotiate mm -hmm. what you share depending on the audience and um, even during your performance, like how, d depending on how they react, how do you negotiate that like, the flow of your performance based on all of those factors? Uh, going into a performance, you know, you, um, depending on where it's at, where it's located, you kind of know, to start off with, you kind of know what you, what the direction you want to go in. Uh, if you're in, if I'm in, um, if I'm doing a uh, performance sp specifically with Lenape, uh, background and it's and we're doing Delaware style dances um, I know that I have to do things in a Delaware way because there are those other Delaware groups out there that are going to be like hey you know what you're not doing that right <laughs> we're going to come after you uh, but in doing that uh, you also if you're doing things that are more of a of a powwow style you know you can add you a lot more you you have a lot more room to, to wiggle, a lot more room to maneuver where powwow style dancing, although it's a traditional style of dancing, it's, it's more contemporary. There, you, you have the freedom to add your own flair while always, and I, I do this always, I always try to educate the, the audience on the history that I know of those dances and then bring in our own our own type of uh, our own type of uh, artistic approach to it, so that if the audience is is not responding to one thing, um, you know, you have to be able to uh, switch it up and add uh, 
a sense of humor or, or something of that nature, you know, just to get or maybe uh, do a little interaction. And if you're doing interaction and you see the audience is not participating with that interaction, you know, then you know, OK, well, we have to bring it a little closer and we have to find uh, us as artists have to find a way to step up and and uh, uh, get the message across that we're trying to present. And um, it, it's it's it changes with every performance. It's it's never the same. And um, that's the, that's one thing that's special about it. It's unique about it. And there's times when I'm, I go and we do a performance that we finished the performance and like, man, that just didn't go the way I wanted it to. Mm-hmm. The crowd didn't react the way I wanted it. And um, uh, yeah, I need to change that up for the next time. And when you go out there the next time and, and you do a performance and it's like, wow, you really had the audience captivated. They were really uh, involved. They were seemed like they couldn't get enough. They were very intrigued. They were, they were, they were in tune with everything that you had to present, and and you learned it. Okay, I need to incorporate a little more of this into our style performance for that particular region, that particular area. So, um, those are the things you pick up just along the way, and everything changes a little differently with every performance. And um, sometimes, like I said. It doesn't go the way you want it to. <laughs> and you're just like, man, I wish I, can I get a do-over? <laughs> um, and the other times you're like, man, I really nailed that one. Yeah, you walk around. No. <laughs> it's a good thing, yeah. Yeah, that, well, that takes incredible skill, you know, and, and not everybody is good at that, at that kind of shifting and pivoting to make sure that, or, or streamlining each time and understanding the audience. That's something that really takes it a lot of experience and skill, which is why you do what you do. Um, what do you think that the impact of your work is out in the world? Do you feel like, you know, you, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your story, but I, I have, oh, no. I'm just wondering, like, cause you're talk you talk about um, wanting to, bring in people, tribal people who maybe are not connected, right? And you're really mm-hmm. concerned. I mean, that's something that you, your kind of life's mission is, is to make sure that people who should be connected or who don't feel like they're connected can connect. And that's really amazing. But then when you go out and you have audiences that are not native, mm-hmm. um, what do you hope to, to gain from like those, like reaching out to those people? Okay. Uh, we're on the East Coast. All right. We are first contact, first contact people. And with the Lenape, uh, not to get, you know, political or anything like this within our, the, the native aspect, I'm talking native politics here. Um, our, our families remained here on the East Coast. Our families, uh, the Lenape people throughout history, I should say, they have, look at the history books, they left New Jersey, they left Pennsylvania, they left New York State, they left Delaware, and uh, we're the ones that, that stayed here and we remained. And so uh, one thing that we try to teach in our, in our uh, presentations is that, number one, is that we're still here. You know, we are still here, our, our uh, you know, who was it, Chris Rock? I think it was Chris Rock saying, you know, what was the last time you ever went to uh, uh, walking down the street and you seen a group of, of, of Indians walking down the street, Native Americans walking down the street, or you went to Red Lobster? He's like, I've never gone to Red Lobster sat next to a family <laughs> of Natives. And, and we look at that like, <laughs> like yes, you did. You uh, just didn't where's know he it. been? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You didn't realize it because we weren't wearing our feathers and, and, and you know, our nice fringe, our fringe clothing. You know, we were just sitting there as everyday people. And we try to make that presentation that even though um, you might not see us and we're not the stereotypical natives that you see on the main screen or the typical stereotypical Indians you would see from out west on the east coast, we are still here. And and that's my main uh, goal. My main objective is to let people know that, you know, that we that we are still here. We still exist in today's community. And, and I live in uh, southern New Jersey. Uh, we have a fairly, uh, fairly large native population here. You know, nothing, nothing great, no stolen, 
what, 1%, 2% of the population here in the county. And if that, and, um, and we're the school systems that are here, we'll do a performance in the school system here. And we're like, man, we didn't know you guys still existed here. We didn't know you knew you were here right here, right here in, in our town. We're like, well, where you've been, we've been doing these performances. We've, and so that's our main thing. That's our main focus is to um, educate outside public that uh, we still have a, we still have a living culture, a culture that's evolving, a culture that's growing, a culture that's not just based off of, uh, you know, 500, 600,000 years ago. We have a culture that's based off of 2020. And, and this is who we are today. And we're surrounding you. We're right here in the community. And that's, and this is how we're going to present ourselves. And that's something that is very upfront. And, and another hard part is, um, oh, uh, we have those in our community that are just like, uh, you know, we know we're Indian, but we don't know anything about it. We've been so out of touch. Our families have been so out of touch that, you know, that we have to educate ourselves, even, even our own community on our language, on our dance styles, on our truth, on our way of thought. I mean, the way of thought is it's such a big thing that we, we forget about. And um, uh, until we can really get that, that way of thought back into our people, it's going to be really hard. And so those are the things that we try to present in, in our music, in our dance, in our performances, in, in our everyday lives. Yeah. Thank you. I really admire the work you do. And I admire that you are so welcoming. And um, I'd say, I don't know if this is the right thing way to say, it, but like non-judgmental, you know, welcoming mm -hmm. of people and, and, willing to share and teach. And, and that's really a beautiful thing. And then same thing with you, Priscilla. I know that, you know, you have a very, you present yourself just, you're very kind, you know, and I imagine that when you're doing your mural art and you're there for weeks on end and people want to talk to you and ask you questions and you probably get some kind, you know, a lot of the same questions that get very tiring and, and seem very simplistic, but you know, people are learning and, and it's not really their fault that they didn't learn and learn the right things in school, right? And this is what we're trying to work on and change. And like IDP Philly is like really working on this here in this in this city. So how do you manage when you're working and people are asking you questions and how do you think how much of that is, do you think is your responsibility? You know, because you're, you're, you're a painter, right? So I know you, and you're a teacher, but you're, you know, like while you're painting, it's not, you know, you could really be like, Hey, I'm painting, you know, I mean, I just, it, it's step back. <laughs> right. So how do you just kind of like, how do you work that? And so that you you can create and so that you're not your space isn't being filled with stuff that you don't need. You know, it's a lot of responsibility on all of all of us. Right. All of us have this responsibility. But where do you draw the line and how do you see yourself making impact? Yeah, um, definitely. That's a great question. <laughs> Um, you know, I just I just go into it with the mindset that um, somebody will ask a question. Um, you know, uh, a child would walk up and and say, "Hey, what are you doing? Can I do that too?" You know, <laughs> so I always have like a little paintbrush uh, in the ready just in case. You know, if it's okay with their parents, and it's like, "Okay, why don't you make a mark?" That's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I've done. I actually I did that with. Um, the mural, uh, the first one I did for Tiny Room. The little girl just walked up and said, can I, can I do something? And I said, sure. All right, not a problem. I mean, I think it has to do with uh, me being pre a preschool teacher also for about 10 years. So, you know, um, you know, I love So you have the patience. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's one of those things. Like you have to, you have to love it. You just have to love what you do when you're working with, you know, two to five year olds, um, you know, uh, 30 of them every day. So, but, um, but yeah, and, and, and just go into it with a mindset that, you know, somebody's going to ask questions and sometimes, you know, you kind of, I kind of look forward to it. I kind of look forward to it. It's like, Oh yeah. Hey, you know, it's a, it is an opportunity. 
um, because uh, it is it is um, just uh, kind of echoing what Yuri was uh, stating, you know, being um, first contact folks um, from the from the islands, um, not necessarily the continental U.S. Um, area, but in the islands, being first contact, you know, uh, it's it's very easy to kind of follow the history books and you know the Western history books stating that we were uh, extinct, you know, or we're we're no longer here, or we we're, we're fully um, integrated into you know whatever uh, nation states, little countries that you see today. And, um, but what a lot of people don't realize and don't understand that even within these uh, islands, there are small communities still that hold on to a lot of the traditions and hold on to a lot of, um, you know, and, and do identify as, and with uh, more and more research, I mean, it's not just stories from individual families, but now there's like, research that's coming out and um, it's it's like from like reputable uh, um, reputable sources like Harvard and all these other folks that are you know um, piecing together a lot of these stories and and you know saying yeah I think these people are still here <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know it's it's it's, it's a shame yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a shame that we have to funny. get validation from an academic source, you know, and not believe the people. You know? Right. <laughs> you know, it's funny, like those articles come out and say, oh, there, there are, I, there was one recently, like DNA found of Taino people and, ooh, and, and then so many people on my feed were like, uh, yeah, we knew that. Like, okay, great. Now there's an article, so it's official. We're official. It's terrible, but it's helpful yeah. if that's if that's what people in the if that's what they validate or that's how they that's what they value. Then it it does help. It does help to some degree. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. Thank you. I'm. I'm you know, it, it feels like we all walk through this world as educators, whether we like it or not, you know, and whether we want to take that responsibility or not. So, but it, as artists, it's extra. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, well, go ahead. If, yeah, I was going to say, um, somebody pointed out to me once, during, like, um, and this goes into this topic, not to, not to step in, but um, it, they were saying that, you know, they asked me, it's like, this this anthropologist who studied your 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 community, how much experience did they had? Oh well, they studied this. They studied our community for for um, you know, twenty years. They studied our community, and this, and that anthropologist, the PhD, they wrote this elaborate piece on about our families. And they're like, "Well, Yuri, how old are you?" I'm like, "I don't know. I'm, I'm forty. around forty nine." He's like, "Well, it seems to me like you've been studying your culture for forty nine years." So it sounds like you might have a little more knowledge than that person who's only studied it for 20. You know, so um, what makes them more of a expert on your culture, on your society, on your families than you when you have 49 years of experience and they only have 20? Yeah, so that was something that somebody had mentioned to me. I never thought about it like that before that, oh, wow, you know, you know, I have this many years because I'm, that's how old I am. And I've been living in this culture and living in this society, living in the study because they were studying our families directly. Yeah. So I just want to add that. Yeah, that's so true. Well, I mean, it's in a lot of our history is oral. And so, you know, and, but this, this society we live in really values the written down stuff. And that anthropologist how much did he really get immersed in the community? How, you know, he was studying, but did everyone tell him true stuff? Like, you know, like, were they messing with him? Like, who knows what he was told or what he learned and what he wasn't able to be a part of. So just because it's written down, folks, <laughs> just be careful what you read. <laughs> so I think we should wrap up. But I just wanted to ask if there's anything else you wanted to contribute to the discussion, because we We've pieced it together. Um, so if there's other questions. No, I'm, I'm good. I just like to say that you know, with my work, um, there's a lot of others that are involved. Mm -hmm. uh, the others from Red Blanket, 
yes. Red Blanket singers and from Otter Trail singers, uh, from our community that, that are involved with the things that we do, our dances and our songs. And uh, without them, you know, they make, they help make me possible as I help make them possible as well. So, you know, thanks. 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 Thanks everybody. Priscilla. Well, um, I would like to say, you know, thank you again. Um, I, I think at, as far as parting words, if anybody wants to know more, um, be careful of the internet. <laughs> You'll find a whole bunch of information on the internet that's not factual. So um, actually ask an actual person that's part of the, the community, whether it be Taino or whether it be um, the, the Nanticoat, Lenin and Lenape um, tribal nation, you know, just ask uh, folks that are directly um, either a citizen or a part of these communities. So don't rely on the internet. <laughs> thank you. Well, that is our panel today. I want to say thank you to IDP Philly um, for making this possible. It was a great discussion. I want to say thank you to your families for making it possible for you to get online and do this with us because I know this is a very complicated time. And um, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the programming for this, for this series. Um, this has been a great experience. And um, this is Tylena Goyo. Happy Indigenous Peoples Day, everybody. Thank you so much right. for joining today. I really appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. See you again. Bye. Bye.